Custom Odin attribute drawers allow the user to control how Odin draws fields that are decorated with a custom attribute. This can be used to create more complex behavior than could easily be done with built-in Odin attributes, or simply add functionality that doesn't currently exist in Odin or is very specific to your use case. This video is going to look at two examples. The first is a simple example for use with a vector2 property that adds sliders inline with the x and y values. The second example is more complex and adds a new functionality to a color field, such as allowing the user to adjust the RGB and HSV values in the inspector. To get us started, I've created a simple field with two properties. The first is a vector2, and the second is a color field. We'll be creating attributes and custom attribute drawers for both of these. To do that, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script for the first attribute, and I'll call the script vector2 slider attribute. Once the script is open, we need to add the namespace of system and change what the script inherits from to attribute. Since we'll be adding sliders to the inspector, we need min and max values to limit the sliders. So I'll create two public float values with corresponding names. A public constructor will take in two arguments, like so, and then inside the constructor, we can use the input arguments to set the min and max values for the attribute. The next step is to create the attribute drawer. The attribute drawer is its own class. This class will make use of Unity editor commands, so I'm going to create a new script inside of an editor folder. This should prevent errors when creating a standalone build. I'll call the new script vector2 slider attribute drawer. The script will need access to several namespaces, including serenix.utilities, serenix.utilities.editor, serenix.odinspector.editor, and Unity Editor. The class will also need to inherit from Odin Attribute Drawer, and we need to add generic arguments. Now we have the option to add one or two arguments. In both cases, the first argument is the attribute that the drawer applies to, and the second optional argument constrains the value type that this attribute drawer can handle. In our case, the attribute is Vector2 Slider Attribute, and we want to constrain this drawer type to just vector2. Next, we need to override the function draw property layout. This function is where we'll define what gets drawn and how to draw it. The first thing we need to do inside the function is get a rect in which to place the elements into. We can do this by calling editor GUI layout dot get control rect. We can then add a label using the function editor GUI dot prefix label and giving it the arguments of the previously created rect and the function's label input argument. It's important to note that Odin labels are optional, so the label passed into this method can be null, and for that reason, we need to add a null check. Next, we need to create a variable to hold the value of the vector2. We can get the value of the field with this.valueEntry.SmartValue. We can then add the line GUI helper dot push label width with an argument of 20 to control the size of the labels. Following this, we can add GUI helper dot pop label width to stop controlling the label width. Then between these two statements, we can add our sliders. We can set the x value by setting it equal to the function editor GUI dot slider. This function requires several arguments and the first argument we'll give it is a rect. Odin provides a convenient extension function rect.alignLeft that when given a width, returns a rect that is aligned to the left of the rect that is passed in. And in this case, we can use half the width of the previously created rect. It's worth noting that Odin provides several other functions that can be used for different alignments, which makes the process of creating a custom drawer much easier. After passing in the rect, we can pass in arguments to give the slider a label, assign the value of the slider, and finally, the min and max values for the slider. Notice that we are able to access the fields in the attribute by calling this.attribute followed by the field name. Now with one slider created, I'll copy the code and edit the values for the y value of the vector2. The final step in our drawer is to set the value of the original field to the value set by the sliders. And that's it. We've got our first custom attribute and custom drawer. All we need to do now is add the attribute to the vector2 field and let Unity compile.
With those two steps done, we can see the new drawer in action in the inspector. This style of custom drawer only works for structs and not on classes. In our case, we are operating on a vector 2, which is a struct. This all boils down to structs being values and classes being references. When we use a smart value for a class to change values, Odin is not aware that anything has changed and nothing is set to dirty. So changes are not saved and a lot of convenient features stop working. For example, multi-selection support. We will be doing a video in the future on best practices for drawing inspectors for classes. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that. Okay, let's move on to the second and somewhat more complicated example of creating a color drawer that gives access to the hex code, RGB, and HSV value all in one inspector. We're going to code it to not only show these values, but to be able to adjust any one value and have the color and all the other values adjust accordingly. To keep things tidy, I'm going to create a new script called my color attribute. Once again, we'll need to add the namespace system and change what the class inherits from to attribute. Now all the magic is going to happen in the drawer. So all we need to do is remove the start and update functions and the attribute is good to go. Just like in the previous example, the drawer will use unity editor code. So I'm going to create a new script and place it in an editor folder. I'll call the new script my color attribute drawer. Again, we need to add a few namespaces and it needs to inherit from Odin attribute drawer. With that done, we need to add generic arguments that correspond to the attribute and optionally the type that the drawer is to be applied to. Again, just like before, we'll then override the function draw property layout. For this drawer, we need to create three variables. The first is a rect, which we can populate using get control rect. The second is a color, and we can set it equal to the value of the field for which the attribute is attached by calling this.valueEntry.SmartValue. And the last variable is a string, and it will store the hex code. We can get the value by calling colorUtility.toHTML string RGB. With the variables created, we can add a label to the inspector once again allowing for the label to be null. As a personal preference, I'm going to add the fields on the next line in the inspector. I can do this by once again calling get control rect. Then calling Serenix editor fields dot color field will create a color field that will allow the editing of a color. This function takes in a rect, which in my case, I want to be aligned to the left and take up three quarters of the width. We also need to give the color field a value, which is the temp color variable defined above. As a side note, Odin provides a wide and useful range of editor fields, such as the color field, to help you create custom drawers. You can find complete documentation on the Odin Inspector website, and we'll add a link in the video description below. Next, we can place a text field to the right of the color field that shows the hex code for the current color. To do this, we can use Serenix editor dot text field which takes an erect and a value. Once again, taking advantage of the extension functions provided by Odin, I'll create a rect that is right aligned and uses the remaining quarter of the width. Then for the value, I'll insert the hash symbol and add the hex code. With that done, the next step is to parse the hex code back to an RGB value. This will allow the designer to paste a hex code directly into the inspector and have the color change accordingly. To do this, we can use colorutility.tryParseHTML string. This function returns true if it is able to parse the string into a color, or false if it's not. The input for the function is the hex code and an out value for the temp color. Then inside the if statement, we can, but it's not strictly necessary, set the field value to that of the temp color. As a helpful side note, in order to parse the string to a color, the hash symbol is needed. If you were to use this in production, it might be worth adding additional code to check for and potentially add a hash symbol if it was missing just to smooth out the use of the inspector. Once again, we can call get control rect to create a new line in the inspector. Then very much like we did for the example of the vector two, we can create a series of sliders that show and adjust the individual RGB channels of our color. The difference here is the width of each slider is roughly a third of the width the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is one.
Adding in the HSV values is a little different in that we need to create variables for each of those channels as the color type does not have properties for those values. We can do this by calling color.rgb to HSV. We then feed in the temp color and creating three new float variables using the keyword out. With the variables created, all we need to do is create a new line and then add in three sliders in a nearly identical fashion to the RGB sliders, adjusting the variables and the label names. The last step with the HSV values is to convert them back to RGB and update the value of the temp color variable, like so. And finally, the last step in our attribute drawer is to update the original property value to that of the temp color so that any changes made in the inspector are reflected in the value of the property. If we add the new attribute to our color field and let Unity compile, we can see our creation in the inspector. If any one value was adjusted, we can see all the other values adjust accordingly. So hopefully this video has helped open the door to creating your own custom attributes and attribute drawers with Odin Inspector. Odin provides several functions that make the process much quicker and easier. So make sure to check out the Odin Inspector website for complete documentation. There are also a few other examples on the website in the tutorial section that include the creation of a health bar and a custom group. You can find links to these tutorials in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.